I am the Philosophical Bachelor and today I want to talk about the big picture, the metaphysics of absolute idealism. Metaphysics is the finding of bad reasons for what we believe upon instinct. But to find these reasons is no less an instinct, writes Francis Herbert Bradley in his 1893 book Appearance and Reality, which is considered his most important work for the British idealist movement. He suggests that we do not start in a state of total ignorance and then through the exploration of various ideas arrive at a theory of what reality is. Instead, we already know what reality is and then try to explain how it is so. Is this reasonable? I agree that as a starting point, we have an inkling, a suspicion of how things are, and as we struggle, imagine and learn the ideas of others, we may come to a point where we want to work out systematically if our inkling makes sense. He also suggests that we cannot help ourselves but to try to find out. As Martin Heidegger says, we are the kinds of beings where being itself is a problem for us. For some people, an uneasiness arising from perplexity about how things are is a driving force that propels them to investigate, so as to achieve intellectual satisfaction. Bradley's aim is no less than to find the truth, the truth being what will then give him intellectual satisfaction. Bradley's theory on reality has two major premises. One, the truth is what reality is. Two, what is true is what has no contradiction. You should pause at this point to consider if you can agree with these premises. The second premise is simply the principle of non-contradiction, which is the basis of logic as articulated by Aristotle way back in ancient times. We cannot have A and not A at the same time in the same place in the same way. For instance, a thing cannot both exist and not exist at the same time. Either it exists or it does not exist. It cannot be in both states at the same time. In terms of statements, either a statement is true or it is false. It cannot be both true and false at the same time. As Aristotle tells us, there is no way to prove the principle of non-contradiction since it is on the basis of this principle that proofs themselves are developed. The corollary of Bradley's two premises, that the truth is reality and what is true brooks no contradictions, is then that what is real cannot have contradictions within it. Bradley's next move is to then pick on what are widely accepted concepts and demonstrate that they contain contradictions. If they contain contradictions, they cannot be true. Yet we do observe them, so it must mean that they are appearances but not reality. Say we have a composite object AB which is comprised of two elements, A and B, and the relation between them. The nature of A by itself does not have a relation to B. How do we know this? If B did not exist, A still remains as A. Hence, the relation between A and B is something external to the nature of A and the nature of B. Let us call this relation between A and B R. So A, B is A, R, B. But what is the relation between A and R? It requires yet another relation, say R1. And what is the relation between A and R1? It requires yet another relation, R2. This leads to an infinite regress, which means that there is a logical contradiction at the heart of the composite A, B, since we can never, even in theory, get to the heart of what the relation between A and B is. Bradley applies this general method to poking holes in many concepts, including the subject predicate form, relations and quality, time and space, cause and effect, motion and change. 
So what then has no contradictions and hence is true and hence real? Only something which is complete in itself, self-consistent, self-evident, self-subsistent and not qualified from the outside. It is what forms a whole since it will then contain the elements and all their mutual relations, hence making it complete in itself. The total then is real, forming a complete or absolute unity, while a plurality of things considered separately are not real, since this diversity of things are not complete in themselves, but still require relations which comes from outside these things. If something has to come from the outside, then the thing is not complete in itself. Only when there is nothing more outside, then can it be complete when it forms a unity. Hence to Bradley, the unity of everything which he terms absolute is the only reality. Everything else, when considered by their plurality of individuality, is only an appearance. Yet we do encounter plurality. In our lived experience, we encounter objects that are separate from us. We can connect with them, but we have to remember that this connection, this relation, is not something imminent to the object or to us, the subject, but is something in addition to both the terms of us, the subject, and that object. Hence, the subject-object concept is troubled by external relation. Even how we describe an object is not complete and hence contradictory. Let us consider a commonplace description of an apple in the familiar subject predicate sentence structure. Say, the apple is red. There is the existence of the object, the apple, being asserted, and there is the content of the object, redness. Yet this subject predicate relation relies on an infinity of background conditions for it to appear as it does. The redness of the apple depends on the way the cones of our retina work. To a colorblind person or to a dog, the apple may not appear red. If the light conditions are poor, the apple may appear grey. The existence and the content of an object as separated, abstracted into two components of subject and predicate tied together in a relation. But what ties the subject to that relation? Another relation. And so we have the infinite regress Bradley was pointing to. While the postulation of relations, abstraction, and isolating the variables can be practically useful, the way we conduct such steps in science, they are not real since they ignore the conditions or assume them presupposed or fixed to allow the steps to be valid. Besides, such abstraction is not real. What is real is the immediate experience we have of the object, a precognitive pure experience which has not yet passed through the structure of our understanding and abstracted into representations which our minds can understand. You may recognize the latter as Immanuel Kant's transcendental idealism. To Bradley, the only things that are real are such immediate experiences. The real is not a monolithic simple substance but is comprised of all these immediate experiences in all its diversity. Yet when all these immediate experiences are unified in the real, it forms a monistic union. This monistic real, the absolute, will then in itself be complete, since it contains everything and their relations. Any contradiction is resolved when considered on the level of the whole, because by being considered holistically, there is a supplementation by other things in the whole. For instance, whatever colour the apple is will be found in this whole, since the whole will include the colour experience of the dog, the human, in all the different light conditions and in all the various background conditions across all the various spaces the apple have occupied and the time it has existed. Hence, the absolute is not just what is in the entire universe at this particular moment, but across all moments. The Absolute is everything, everywhere and in every moment, past, present and future. That total Absolute Whole is reality and anything short of that is merely an appearance. These appearances bear some degree of truth and reality 
but not the total truth and reality of the Absolute. The more self-complete, the more self-explicating the object under consideration is, the more true, the more real it is. But it can never be completely real and true unless it is the Absolute, since there will remain some degree of contradiction. Considering Bradley's theory of holism ethically, Whatever evil exists in some things is on the level of the Absolute resolved, neutralized by its internal relation to goodness in other things. Both goodness and evil are appearances. When all things are considered, all one-sidedness is alleviated. Simplistically, the victim of robbery experiences suffering while the robber experiences joy, leaving a seeming net remainder of zero on the global level. While there may be local injustice, at the global level there is in fact no injustice, but neither is there justice. Bradley admits that we have no way to understand the details of how things work out in his system at a local level, though on the global level, things in fact do work out. His metaphysical thesis of the Absolute is hard to fault. In general, it seems right, though its veracity is almost the veracity of a truism, that the way things are, are the way things are, and that's about it. It is akin to the principle of identity in logic, where A equals to A. It is a fundamental truth, axiomatic in nature, but being so fundamental, there is not much practical use for it. Bradley is however not to blame for this, since after all, an aim of metaphysics, specifically ontology, is to understand the fundaments of the nature of reality, and he has done that. Perhaps the fact that the conception of absolute idealism seems so basic after it has been explained is testament to its veracity. Compared to other systems such as the Neoplatonic Transcendent One or Platonic forms which requires more entities, is more complicated, more counterintuitive and beset with logical problems, Bradley's absolute is simpler and does not require big leaps of the modern imagination to make sense of it. Compared to other totalizing metaphysics such as Spinoza's Deus Sive Natura, Bradley's theory can be clarifying why there is only the Absolute, because of the contradictions in anything found below the Absolute. Bradley's idea that things separate from the Absolute are merely illusions find resonance in religious doctrines such as Buddhism and Hinduism, which speaks of the veil of Maya and how one needs to penetrate through it to understand the ultimate reality. Finally, the idea that the Absolute contains not things but immediate experiences points to how processes and not substance are the underlying constituents of reality. Thank you for listening to The Philosophical Bachelor.